Chapter 3, Measures of Central Tendency, Part 3, The Median. The median is the midpoint of the scores in a distribution when they are listed in order from smallest to largest. We may have encountered the word median before um, in relation to the freeway. So we have um, traffic flowing in different directions. In the center, we have what we refer to as the median. It divides that traffic in half. Um, based on the different directions of north and south or east and west. So again, the median is the middle point. The median divides the scores into two groups of equal size. And that differs from our definition of the balance point when we were talking about the mean. The mean value separates a distribution where we have equal distance, um, the actual scores, are equally distanced above the mean and below the mean. The median, however, splits the distribution in half where we have equal number of scores or equal number of frequency above that middle score and below that middle score. So again, the, the emphasis for the mean is equal distance and for the median, equal number of scores or frequencies above that center score. So locating the median when we have an odd number of scores in our distribution. It's quite simple. Um, we have a distribution here of scores of 8, 11, 3, 5, and 10. And the first point here says that we must put the scores in order. Um, notice that they are not in order. This is the, the raw format that we collected data. Let's say these are um, um, ages of children that we've surveyed. And if we don't place them in order first, or the error that may be committed, and it's very common, is that we report the middle score, right? We see three in the center, and we may, um, in error, say that median is equal to a score of three. And again, by definition, that's the middle score, but we've neglected to take care of that first step, which requires us to first put all the scores in order. And that's what we've done down here. We've listed all of the scores in order, beginning with the lowest to the highest. And now we see that the median is not equal to 3, and the median, in fact, is equal to 8. Um, that's the center score. And again, by definition, we indicated that that value will separate the distribution where we have an equal number of scores above and below or percentage, right? So we can say 50% of the distribution is above that score of 8, and 50% of the distribution is below. And again, we're talking about number of scores. I had shown you with the balance, um, the teeter-totter, that the mean was not dividing the distribution with equal number of scores above and below, and, and I illustrated that with that um, visual. But here, we are saying that there are equal number of scores or equal number of frequencies above and below. Now, this is quite easy when we're working with a discrete variable. Again, a discrete variable is a value that cannot be divided um, into smaller pieces. In other words, it can't report, be reported as a proportion. And also, this process of locating the median is quite easy when we have an odd number of scores because there's exactly one value that, that defines the center. However, what do we do if we have an even number of scores? So here's an example of locating the median when there's an even number of scores. So here's the raw data of my scores of 9, 1, 4, 1, 5, 7. And um, because we have an even number of scores, we have six scores, we recognize that there's not one single value in the center of the distribution. If we left it in this format, in this raw format, we would say that these two are in the center, value 4 and 1. But again, we're neglecting to take care of that first step, which says that we must put the scores in order. So let's do that. So down here, we have all of these scores relisted in order from smallest to largest. And now we see that the two center scores are 4 and 5. And what we need to do so that we report one value that represents the median is to average those two values. So here we, we show that the median is equal to the score of 4 
plus 5 divided by 2 and we get a score of 4.5. So the median in this distribution is equal to 4.5. And notice that that's not even one of our values, but that's okay when we have an even number of scores in our distribution. We recognize that um, there will be two values in the center that are fighting or vying for that position of representing the median, the value that separates the distribution in half. And again, by definition, now we have 50% of the scores above and 50% of the scores below once we've averaged that value. So instead of 4.5, uh, we, excuse me, instead of 4 or 5, we now show this value in the center that represents the middle of the distribution and then the value is x is equal to 4.5 and that's the median of this distribution. So just be conscientious that when you have an even number of scores you must find the two center scores and average them out. Again this this process that I just illustrated for these two examples pertains to a discrete variable, a value that's a whole number that cannot be um, divided into a smaller value and cannot be reported as a proportion. So how do we find the median of a continuous variable? And, and um, I'll go over that next with you in, in a couple of examples. So we're going to find the precise median for a continuous variable. By definition, a continuous variable is one that can be infinitely divided. Again, one that, uh, a value that can be expressed as a proportion, as a decimal. The pre precise median is located in the interval defined by the real limits of the value. So again, we, re we learned uh, what real limits were. Essentially, they're just a range that are um, created by the researcher to um, divide this continu continuum of values. And um, in the previous video, I had talked about um, weight as an example of a continuous variable. And if multiple individuals recorded or reported their weight as 130, we recognize that not all of them weigh exactly 130 pounds. That if we set the real limits at 129.5 to 130.4, then we can say that that range of values constitutes 130 pounds recognizing that there's going to be some fluctuation and weight can be reported as a decimal uh, fraction. So we create these real limits um, to set boundaries that define a particular value and we're going to use those real limits um, and our understanding of intervals um, to express or report or identify the exact x value that splits a distribution in half when we're working with a continuous variable. So again, it's necessary to determine the fraction of the interval needed. So we're going to partition off frequencies um, in, in a manner which will leave us at an x value on the abscissa that splits a distribution in half in terms of equal frequencies or equal number of scores above and below. So we're going to partition off some scores or partition off a frequency so we can find that precise center of a distribution when we're working with a continuous variable. So the equation that we're going to utilize is as follows. The fraction is equal to the number needed to reach 50 percent. Okay, and what we're referring to is the number of frequencies needed to reach 50 percent. By definition, the median is splitting the distribution where we have 50 percent of frequencies or scores below and 50% above. And we're going to divide that by the number um, in the interval, the number of frequencies or the number of scores in the interval. So um, let's walk through an example from our text. And just a side note, I do have a video on the medium of continuous variable posted. So it, it gives you some more detail. And I'll just walk through these fairly quickly. So on the left, um, graph A shows a distribution, a frequency distribution. So again, we have frequency and our x values here on the abscissa. And what we want to do is find out what the median is. So the median is equal to some value. And it's going to be reported as an x value because, again, the x values are the variables, the values um, of the data that we're collecting. So 
Our first step is to identify what our sample size is. How many scores are we working with or what's the total frequency? And we can simply just count the boxes because each box represents a score of frequency. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, by definition, the median is splitting the frequencies in half. And so what we want to identify is what is the, the middle of that. So um, technically all we need to do is take eight and divide by two. And we get four. So when we use that equation that said the fraction is equal to number needed to reach 50% over number in interval, The four represents number needed to reach 50%, right? So if we want to split um, the frequencies in half or identify 50% of the frequencies, that's equal to four. So what we're going to do is from left to right, move um, towards the right until we collect enough frequencies or scores or boxes um, to reach four. So we would have, and here it's shaded in blue already, so we have one, two, and three. And at that point, we can't go any further. It's kind of like a roadblock because the next interval has four frequencies. So we recognize that at this point, this is the interval of interest because it contains that fourth frequency, but it has four frequencies or four scores. So number and interval, the number of, in the interval, the number of frequencies or scores in that interval where we reached a roadblock is equal to four. And I just realized I made a mistake. Um, what I identified up here, and I apologize for that, is this, this up here, this number four represents half. And I, misreported number needed to reach 50%. So we, we went one, two, three, and what, what do we need to achieve this number four? And that was my mistake. I should have written one. We only need one. The total half is equal to four. We're able to accumulate, again, one frequency, two frequencies, three frequencies, or one score, two scores, three scores, and we need one more to reach 50%. So I apologize for that. So it's actually a fraction of one quarter, one over four. If we report it as a decimal, that's 0.25. Okay. And what we need to do now is identify the exact median, the exact X value that separates this distribution. So if we think about um, real limits, again, real limits split the distribution in a range, and it's usually a, a whole number divided in half. So technically, and this is getting a little sloppy, but that's okay. This is 0.5, and it goes all the way to 1.5, and so on, 2.5, 3.5, and so I'm going to erase some of this so that we can see how to come up with our exact median value. So again, what I had indicated, this point would be 0.5. This value here would be 1.5 and extends to 2.5. And 2.5 extends to a value of 3.5. So this is the point of interest here. So it would be x is equal to 3.5, and that's where we were stopped in our tracks from accumulating the ideal number or the exact number that represents 50% of scores below or frequencies below and 50% above. So what we need to do is move over on our abscissa or x-axis so that we then report the exact x value. And they've kind of done this here, and what we're saying is that we're going to take one quarter, or 0.25, or 1 over 4, 
of each of these frequencies, and that's the blue shaded values here. And what we're going to do is add 0.25, right? We're going to move over a quarter of a frequency on our x axis to then identify what the median value is. And therefore, the median is equal to that x value where we ended up um, encountering a roadblock, and that was 3.5 plus the fraction that we just calculated using our equation. So the median, as it's reported there, is actually equal to 3.75. And so now what we've done is we've partitioned all four of these frequencies where the blue shaded part is one quarter, represents one quarter. So one quarter plus one quarter plus one quarter plus one quarter is equal to one. So what we've done is partition by moving our x value over to this value of 3.75. Now we've allocated a portion of each of these frequencies or each of these scores where we have a total of one frequency left below that value of 3.75. And what's left over on the other side? Well, if we take one minus a quarter, we get three quarters. So three quarters plus three quarters plus three quarters plus three quarters. All right, if we take three quarters, whoops, that should be a four. Oops. This here should be a four, not a three. Okay, so if we add that up, in other words, we're, we're taking three quarters and four times and adding that up, and that gives us three, three. And I'm gonna erase this here just so we can see this a little more clearly. So again, we have three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, and that's equal to three, plus one more here down at the bottom. We have another frequency or score here plus one, and that gives us four. And so now we've what we've demonstrated is that in the blue shaded area, we have a total frequency of four. Again, one, two, three, and then a quarter, four times, so that's equal to four. And on the other side, we have three quarters, four times, plus one, so that's three plus one, and we get four. So this is how we go about finding the median for a continuous variable. And again, I have a, a video um, posted already that walks you through several other examples um, in case you're having difficulty with this concept. The reality is this, this process is not readily used. Um, however, it is a skill that you need to be able to demonstrate um, for the homework quiz and on the exam. All right, so the mean excuse me, median, mean, and the middle. So again, different ways of expressing the center. So the mean is the balance point of the distribution defined by distance. Again, I indicated that um, using that teeter-totter example that the mathematical center is derived by using our equation of um, the mean is equal to the sum of x divided by m, and then all the other scores will be equal distance from that center value often is not the uh, midpoint of the scores, meaning that it's not going to be the exact in terms of number of scores above and below. It could be, um, and it would be if the distribution was symmetrical, where in that case the mean, mean, and mode would all be equal to one another. The median is the midpoint of a distribution. It's defined by the number of scores above and below that center value often is not the balance point of the scores, so <clears throat> it doesn't divide the distribution where we have equal distance um, above and below. But we would if the distribution is symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical. Both measure central tendency using two different concepts of the middle. So again, the, the mean is in reference to the distance, and the median is number of scores, and we want equal allocation of distance above and below for the mean, equal allocation of number of scores or frequencies above and below for the median. So in this 
um, example, I'll show you how we can um, see the visual interpretation of the median equal scores above and below versus the center value that um, shows equal distance. So first of all, let's consider our x values. So our x values are equal to, we have two occurring once, twice, three times, whoops, <laughs> three times, and the score of three occurring twice, and a score of 12 occurring once. So if we want to calculate the mean, we know that the mean is equal to the sum of x over n. So the sum of x, we would take the sum of all of these values. So we have 2, 4, 6, um, plus 3, 9, plus 3 more is 12, plus 12, we have 24. And then how many scores do we have? And we can count the, the boxes that represent how many scores, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or how many scores I listed here. So divide by 6. So the mean would be 24 divided by 6, and we get a score of 4. And so here we identified the value of 4, which represents the mean, dividing the distribution where we have equal distance above and below. Okay, so let's count the distance. Um, now that we've dis um, split the distribution, we have identified exactly what x is equal to, right? This this is an x value. The value of 4 is an x value, and it represents the mean of the distribution, the average. By definition, we're going to, we're, we should be able to see that that value divides the di distribution where we have equal distance from that value above and below. So let's count out the distance from 4 to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 points above. And then over here, we have all of these values, and we'll count out the distance accounting for each value. So we have a score of 3, and that deviates by 1. And it occurs another time, deviates by 1. And then we have 1, 2, and that occurs again. 1, 2, and a third time. One, two. So we have two, four, six, seven, eight. So total, right, eight points below. So again, equal distance. That score, x is equal to four, represents the mean. It divides the distribution where we have equal distance above and equal distance below. And um, we can ask ourselves, is there equal number of frequencies or equal number of scores above and below? And the answer would be no. We have one score above the mean of four, and we have one, two, three, four, five scores below. So again, the mean definition of the balance point is that we have equal distance above and below. All right, now let's identify what the median would equal. So the median, if we are working with a discrete variable, what we would do is place these x values in order, which we've already done. And again, we have six values. So n, right, n, and I should uh, write capital N, since this is an example of population, is equal to six. So we have an even number of scores, which means that I have two in the center, two values vying for that um, center position. So to find the actual x value that represents the median, we would take those two values, right, add them together, and divide by two. So we have two plus three is five, divided by two, and we get 2.5. And again, that's... Um, how we would approach it if it was a discrete variable. If it was a continuous variable, then we would, um, again, move from left to right on the x-axis to identify exactly what the x is equal to. Um, and again, what we would need to do first is identify how many frequencies or scores are we working with, identify what half of that would be. 
So 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3, and so what we want to do is allocate three scores or three frequencies above and below this particular x value. So again, moving from left to right, we um, want to collect 3, and in this very easy example, we have 3 here, right? And so where that ends is this value here. So if it was a continuous variable, we would identify that x is equal to 2.5, where we are able to allocate three um, frequencies or scores uh, below that value, and we see that we have three values above, right? So again, the median is equal to 2.5, whether it is a discrete or continuous variable for this particular example. So again, this hopefully shows you visually what we mean by uh, the difference between equal distance above and below versus equal number of scores above and below. So again, in red, I have three scores. Three scores here, and that represents 50% above. And then I have three scores here, and that represents 50% below. And the value that separates this distribution accordingly to that definition is x is equal to two and a half. And again, um, I recommend that you watch the video that's posted on Blackboard um, that gives you some more examples of how to find the continuous variable of a distribution. All right, to ensure that we understand um, the material that has just been presented, let's um, answer these questions. It's true or false. So decide which one is true or false. First one, it is possible for more than 50% of the scores, scores in a distribution to have values above the mean. So again, by definition, the mean indicates that the distribution is split in half where we have equal distance, not necessarily scores. So we would conclude that this is true. We could have a distribution where the mean splits a distribution in half where we have equal distance above and below, but not necessarily equal number of scores. So it is possible to have more than 50% of the scores in distribution above the mean. Next one, it is possible for more than 50% of scores in a distribution to have values above the median. By definition, the median says we must have 50% of scores above and below. So this would be false, right? So we have, again, a distribution, an x value here, that's the median. And by definition, we'll have 50% of scores above and 50% of scores below. And again, recognizing the distinction between the two. So let's look at here this, this um, more extended answer. So the first one is true. More than 50% of the scores in a negatively skewed distribution, to be more precise. So what does negatively skewed look like? We'd have this kind of shape. We have x. And let's say this is the mean, right? And this is showing that it's greater more than 50%. So we have more than 50% of the scores above the mean. Um, if it was negatively skewed, if you were talking about negatively skewed distribution, so this, excuse me, that is negatively skewed. If it was positively skewed, the distribution would look like this. And the mean, more or less, in the center here, and here we would see that we have more than 50% below that value. So again, when we're talking about number of scores, we don't expect the mean to separate equal number of scores above and below. It's the distance from that center value. And again, the median is defined as a score that divides the distribution exactly in half with 50% above and 50% below. So again, focusing on the words that are being um, used. You know, are we talking about scores? Are we talking about distance? Are we referring to the mean or the median? And to end this um, brief introduction of the median, 
I want to discuss the um, instances when the median would be pr the preferred measure of central tendency. When we have um, the ability to calculate the mean, that is always preferred. However, there are instances where it's not going to be the best representation of all the scores and distribution. Recall that the purpose of the measure of central tendency is to select or report a value that represents all the values um, the best. Um, and so when we have a distribution that's skewed, okay, when distribution is skewed, let's take, for example, I recall um, someone posting on the Padlet uh, in one of my sections, the Padlet assignment exploring the use of statistics, the median price of homes. And um, the question would be, why do they report the median versus the mean? And the reason is that the price of homes is very skewed. And so if we were to report the mean price of a home in San Diego County, it would be quite inflated because we're taking into consideration the um, million dollar homes in La Jolla or Rancho Santa Fe, multi-million dollar homes, I should say. Um, and so that's going to obscure, overestimate what the average is. So when we're talking about the price of a home, we often report the median because the distribution is going to be quite skewed. Um, so when do we use the median versus the mean? So if you can calculate the mathematical mean, the mean is preferred, but we would, refer, we would use the median when when the distribution is skewed. The price of homes is the perfect example. We would also use the median when we have what we refer to as undetermined values. And the distribution includes values. Again, to calculate the mean of a population, we need to take the sum of all our x values divided by how many x values we have, how many scores we have. And here's an example from the text. Table 3.5 shows that the number of minutes needed to assemble a wood puzzle. And here we have um, the children and their times, their x values. Here are their x values. And so child one finished in eight minutes, child four finished in 13 minutes, child six never finished. And therefore we don't have an x value for that child. And as a result, we're prohibited from summing our x values. We don't know what child six x value is. So therefore, we would use the median opposed to the mean because we don't have all x values to calculate the mathematical center of the distribution. Similarly, um, if we have open-ended distributions or, or responses, so we we'll use the median when distribution includes includes what we refer to as open ended x values. What does that mean? Well, here's another example from the text. It says number of pizzas consumed. So these are x values and the frequencies. And so we have um, Four individuals, again the frequency here, four individuals ate zero pieces, two individuals ate three pieces, three individuals ate five or more, five or more. And because we don't know exactly how many they ate, those three individuals, we don't know what their x value is precisely. So it's just being recorded as more than five, five or more. So all three could have eaten eaten five, they could have eaten more. So again, we don't have what's necessary. We don't have the exact x values that need to be summed to calculate the mean. So as an alternative, the median would be the preferred measure of central tendency to utilize. And then finally, if we have um, quantitative data 
and we're, we have all x values, again, mean is preferred. But if we're working with qualitative data, notice that if the qualitative data is nominal, we can't um, rank it, but if it's ordinal, so we use the median when distribution includes ordinal data. Because we can rank the, the verbal categories and then find this, the center of that distribution. And again, it depends on what, what value or variable we're working with. The mode might be more appropriate depending on what information we want to convey. But these are some of the basic um, rules as to when we would utilize the median opposed to the mean. And that concludes part three of chapter three, Measures Essential Tendency.